her. <laughs> If you come to a busy junction, check to see if there's all the fast-moving traffic in the road in front. If so, go rebel yell! <laughs> and then look left, look right, look left again until you find your leg. <laughs> Written English controls your life so much that you can see your life as just a series of letters from infancy. Dear Mrs. Baddiel, here is your child's vaccination certificate. David successfully vaccinated 29 people. Congratulations. <laughs> to childhood. Dear Mr. Hopkinson, please can you let David off PE today as he has asked me to write you this letter. Yours, Mrs. Baddiel. <laughs> to adolescents. Dear David, this is a hard letter to write. It is over between us. It will never work with you going to university and me staying on for another year at Sixth Form College. Yours, <laughs> Mr. Hopkinson. <laughs> uh, the English language is a beautiful thing and has been exported around the world very imaginatively. So, what shall we call this land we have newly found? Well, it is a land we have newly found, so why not call it New Found Land? <laughs> It's crap, but it'll do. <laughs> Have you thought of a name for that large island we passed on the way? Ah, the one that was all glaciers and snow, all completely white. Yes. Greenland. <laughs> Iceland would be better. No, 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 we've used that. Bee Jam. No, 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 no. <laughs> I prefer Iceland. It has a sort of surreal, ironic tinge to it. Hmm. It's crap, but it'll do. We can always change, change it later. <laughs> One big question mark in the history of English is, where did the American accent come from? The Pilgrim Fathers left from Plymouth, so they presumably had West Country accents. Well, something changed somewhere along the line, or all the films would look very different. <laughs> of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she has a lot of the money. Play it again, Sam. Two, three, four. I've got a brand new gun. <laughs> But perhaps the strangest of all British dialects is the one used by tabloid newspapers who have invented a brand of English spoken nowhere in Britain outside of newspaper offices. How's your song, Nigel? 26. <laughs> oh, uh, he's to wed. Ooh, wedding bells for Nigel, 26. Is it a whirlwind romance or is he to wed his longtime live in lover, Lindsay? 36. <laughs> 2436. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a tug of love, snip hop, office Romeo's heartbreak, death plunge, sex change shocker. <laughs> he told of his ordeal. He was ashen faced as from his £150,000 house in London's posh Ealing. He, <laughs> he told our reporter to four letter shocker off. <laughs> Prince Charles has made several speeches warning that the English language is in decline. To illustrate this, he imagined a version of Hamlet in contemporary English. But this isn't really a fair example. Let's face it, there are many contemporary situations where Shakespearean language wouldn't frankly be much use. At the third stroke, the time, time, that many-fingered creature, thief of days, who steals youth's visage in his carpal vice, time, sponsored by Accurist, <laughs> now manufacturers of watches which do wrap around the wrist like shards of eternity, the time will be to be or not to be. <laughs> Good evening. Tonight on the South Bank Show, I'm talking to one of the most neglected composers and lyricists of modern times, Ralph Perryman, the man who originally wrote all the songs now regularly sung on the terraces of football matches. <laughs> Classics of his include He's Fat, He's Round, He's Always on the Ground, Cyril Knowles. <laughs> Satirical songs such as Where's Your Father, Referee? And his latest, and perhaps greatest number, You're So Shit, It's Unbelievable. <laughs> Ralph, what would you say was your central message? Well, I don't know, Melvin. An artist often works without a knowledge of his basic intentions. For example, my early song, We Hate Tottenham, which goes, we hate Tottenham and we hate Tottenham. We hate Tottenham and we hate Tottenham. We hate Tottenham and we hate Tottenham. We are the Tottenham haters. <laughs> you see, 
I still don't know what that song is trying to say. Well, for me personally, I think the theme of hating Tottenham comes across quite strongly. Really, I always thought it was a song about spring. Well, your most recent composition was a topical song which summed up the whole spirit of this last Christmas. Are you referring, of course, to Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle All the Way? Oh, what fun it is to see Adams put away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, you're also the man behind some of the great playground songs of the 1970s. And for me, there are three things which sum up the 1970s. Uh, Watergate, the baddest strike which brought down the 10th government, and the song My Friend Billy's Got a Ten-Foot Willy and he showed it to the girl next door. She thought it was a snake, so she hit it with a rake. And now it's only four foot four. <laughs> But you went on to write a series of popular carols. Yes, that resulted in my most mature work, I think. We Three Kings of Leicester Square, Selling Ladies' Underwear. I've always found the central section of that piece intensely moving. I'd like to read it, if I may. I'd be honoured, Melvin. <laughs> star of wonder, star of light, Tarzan set his pants alight. <laughs> and, of course, the Tarzan motif recurs in what I like to call my opus magnus magnuson. Tarzan in the jungle, had a bellyache, wants to do a toilet, <laughs> too late. I understand that the lyrics there are allegorical. Yes, Tarzan is actually me, and it wasn't the jungle, it was Alton Towers. <laughs> Ralph Harriman, thank you very much. Learning a musical instrument is, for most of us, a terribly disillusioning process. When parents start their children off learning the recorder, they expect to get this. <laughs> Whereas, in fact, of course... <laughs> What they actually get, of course, is this. Even worse is the piano. Wherever you find a piano, there will always be someone who will go over to it and start playing the same thing. And to make it even worse, someone else will join them and start going... <laughs> and thanks to Depeche Mode for that demonstration. <laughs> now, over the last year or so, classical music has started to enter the pop chart, with Nigel Kennedy and Carreras Domingo Pavarotti making the top three. How will this success in the pop world affect classical musicians? Already there are signs that it is beginning to do so. Last week, for example, the Berlin Symphony Orchestra split. The woodwind section left owing to musical differences. And already the lead clarinetist, Hans Pieter Dortmund, has released his first solo album. Concerto for clarinet and orchestra, only without the orchestra. <laughs> and already it seems that the familiar vices of popular music are creeping into the classics. record companies is how to cash in on the public's newfound interest in classical music. Many people know the tunes from films or commercials, but they don't know the names or the composers. In an attempt to overcome this, covers have been redesigned to help. New releases this month include Beethoven's Da 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 Da, <laughs> Mozart's Da 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 you know the one from Trading Places. <laughs> And, of course, Vorjak's Brown Bread Symphony. <laughs> Staying with music of another era, we come to heavy metal. Now, recently, there have been many accusations that heavy metal promotes devil worship. To show that this is nonsense, Iron Maiden released Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter, <laughs> a sensitive song about converting one's offspring to vegetarianism through showing them what happens in abattoirs. <laughs> it always begs the question, does this mean the devil is a heavy metal fan? Will you turn that slacky round down, Lucifer? 
sorry, Mom. Hey, what's this? It's got a good beat. A heavy metal fan, the fact is, a heavy metal fan killed himself after playing a Judas Priest record backwards. Now, that's really shocking, as it normally only happens when you play them forwards. <laughs> but if heavy metal fans are the minions of Satan, then the Prince of Darkness can only be one man. <laughs> Hi, Pop Pickers, Fluff here. Hey, tell you what, earlier today I punched a baby's face and buggered some chickens, not half. <laughs> A simple video recorder can reveal which top celebrities are smuggling satanic messages onto our screens through backward babbling. Satan is your lord and master. Take your own life back after this break. <laughs> And if speaking in tongues is the mark of Satan, then the next person we need to burn is that bloke, Professor Stanley Unwin. Goodly day, load. I am the Elsie Buggy Lady. Your mother suck any cock bowls in hell. <laughs> Yes, hey. Well, you can see English, yes.